Welcome to lovely Santa Barbara, California. And I'm here because Nissan flew me out here to test drive that. That's right, it is the brand new Nissan Altima. And coming up right now in the fast lane car, I'm gonna give you the top 10 things you need to know about this car. And there are some very firsts. And number 10 is the fact that there are now nine new color choices. Because if you're a keen observer, you'll note that there's a silver car behind me and not a red car. No, 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 I'm kidding. There are nine new colors, but number 10 is the fact that this car, according to Nissan, has the world's first variable compression turbo. Let me show you. It's a two liter engine and it's not under the hood of this car because this has the 2.5 liter that puts out 188 horsepower and 180 pound foot of torque. It gets 26 in the city, 36 on the highway, and 30 combined. It is also mated, this being a Nissan, to a CBT. But the real news is the two liter turbo with the variable compression. Let's talk about that one. And here it is. This is a variable compression turbo that puts out, well, it's right there, 248 horsepower. And what Nissan says is that when you can change the compression, you can also increase fuel economy. And there you have it, the world's first variable compression turbo, which is pretty phenomenal given that this is an all-wheel drive car. And that all-wheel drive, that's coming up on the list. I haven't forgotten it. Here's a little behind the scenes. Not only do we get to drive really cool cars, but we get to have really cool ice cream. Look at this, I've got McConnell's out of Santa Barbara. And uh, what do you guys specialize in? We specialize in fine ice creams made from our own milk. Oh, oh, yeah, oh, that is incredible. Mm. I wish you could taste this at home. I feel like uh, we're doing this an injustice. There are really two things that have made and continue to make this car successful and that is first and foremost value. Nissan always gives you a lot of value. Oftentimes they may not be the first in terms of the most innovative features or the coolest creature comforts but there's always a lot of value and with this sixth generation that value proposition continues. Not only do you get all the new safety tech but now with the addition of all-wheel drive, which is basically based on the system that's in the Murano and Rogue. In other words, a system that sends power basically to the rear wheels when the front wheels start to slip. You get the confidence of having a vehicle that is, especially if you live in Colorado, both a summer and a winter car. At number nine is the fact that this Ultima has been around since 1993. That's 25 years. This is the sixth generation and Nissan has sold 5.7 million of these. The Ultima is one of Nissan's most successful cars. They sell well over 200,000 units every year and that means when they redesign it, it's not going to be revolutionary but evolutionary. And to show you what I mean, I'm standing in front of the old Ultima and the new one is back there so you can Certainly tell there's a family resemblance. The new one is much more bold, much more angular, much more, well, actually three words define it. And I had a chance to speak with the car's designer. So let's have a chat. During the presentation, you said that there were like three words that, that embodied this car, right? One was, I think, stylish. Yep, stylish, uh, sleek, and sexy. And no. sexy. That's actually, that's one of them too. You could say it's sexy. Yeah. And what were the three? Stylish, sleek, and what was the third one? And spacious. So, and spacious, yeah, yeah, we want everything. 
to us, it's, the, it's all about the proportion. That's something you cannot get in a crossover. A sedan is low and sleek, and hence those keywords. And, but at the same time, there's a balance of practicality in it. The cabin is spacious. So we think our customer would really like this, and we, we try to amplify those aspects. So in the new Altima, we made it an inch lower, an inch wider, so it's a much better aspect ratio. When you follow it down the road, you can see this new shape, and it just looks a lot more planted and, and, and sporty. You know, going along that theme of longer, lower, wider, so every line we put on the car is purposeful to accentuate that. So we have a character line that runs from the headlamp all the way back, you know, through the body side to the back of the car, and that divides up the shape, so it makes it look even slimmer. We're making the car more lean and athletic. So Now the front fascia has a very distinct look, it's very Ultima. How did you um, kind of incorporate the V shape, right? We made the V motion much bigger, so now it's encompassing. Yeah, this is the you know, front, yeah. Right? So, so it starts off in the front and then it flows you know, along the hood and through the back of the car. So by now you've probably figured out that design is number eight. I also had a chance to speak with the interior designer and she said that on the inside they were going for more of a handbag and less of a diaper bag. In other words, and those are the words she used, in other words they wanted to make it sexy and sleek and not just a big bag that holds a lot of stuff. And well let me show you the inside. At number seven is backseat room, and quite frankly, it's enormous back here. I'm sitting behind myself, and I still have at least, what, one or two inches before my knees would even think about touching the front seat. Very comfortable. The only issue I have is headroom. When you make a car lower, you're, of course, going to also lower the headroom. So while there is ample backseat room, headroom, if you're tall like me, 6'2", is a little on the tight side. But otherwise, this is becoming a mini Maxima. And number six is right here. The old Altima had a relatively small five inch screen. The new one has a massive eight inch screen. Okay, compared to a Tesla, it's not massive, but nevertheless, for a Nissan, it's a big screen. And now you get Apple CarPlay and Android Auto as standard. Number five is the price. Unfortunately, the exact numbers are embargoed, but I can give you a hint. It's very similar to last year's model, maybe just a little bit more. But for that, you get a lot more tech, and I've got them written down here because there's a lot of it. You get things like Pro Pilot Assist, Intelligent Driver Alert, Rear Automatic Braking, Traffic Sign Recognition, which is pretty cool, Automatic Emergency Braking and Pedestrian Detection, and of course, Lane Departure Warning and Intelligent Lane Intervention. Now, Nissan isn't the only manufacturer to package all of these and give them to you in a car, but it is becoming an industry standard, and Nissan is right there with the rest of the competition to give you the stuff that makes the car, well, not drive itself, but certainly much safer. This Ultima is a mid-size sedan, okay, a very large mid-size sedan, and competes with cars like the Honda Accord and the Toyota Camry, but what sets it apart from those cars? Well, first and foremost, there are six trim levels, there are two engine choices, and there is a very important fact that you'll have to wait until we get to number one. Number three is for all of you who love sporty cars like I do, and that is that the SR version of this car, in other words, the SR trim, is a sporty one. It comes with stiffer suspension, tighter steering, and 19-inch wheels, which is all good. Unfortunately, no matter what engine you get, you're always going to get a CVT, and that, at least for people who love sporty driving, isn't that good. At number two, we have electronic power steering. This is the first Altima to get it, and it allows the car to do things like keep you in your lane by itself. Will it drive itself? No, you have to still keep your hands on the wheel, but it does save on fuel, and it is the newest thing in the automotive world, and finally, the Altima gets it. All right, I better get back to work because there's something really cool about this car that you have to know. It's the first Altima with all-wheel drive and you would think that they would pair the all-wheel drive with the brand new and more powerful 2.0-liter turbo, but no, you can't get it with the 2.0-liter turbo. You can only get it with the regular 2.5-liter inline four. And why is that? Well, Nissan says that it wants to bring all-wheel drive to the people, 
so they don't want to make it expensive they want to make it available for everybody and just like ice cream that is a good thing all right Nissan let's just you and me talk we're friends right and friends have to be honest with friends and you say that the sporty model is this SR with the 2 liter turbo and I agree but as an enthusiast I think the sporty model is this car with the turbo and the all-wheel drive and I'm hoping that you know that as well and that maybe two years from now you're actually gonna give us that option so overall what you have is a car that is bigger, less thirsty or more fuel efficient, now with all wheel drive, and with just a lot of comfort and relatively simple and straightforward ergonomics. That is a winning combination, and that's why I think that this car may not buck the latest crossover trend, but it will certainly stay where it is in terms of being one of the sales leaders in a very competitive, and I mean hyper-competitive segment. At TFL, we make a promise. You saw it first on the fast lane car. That's why we published these videos ahead of the embargo, but I get it. You're wondering about how much, for instance, this car costs and how much is the optional all-wheel drive. Well, we're going to have all that information for you when the embargo lifts on September 28th on TFLcar.com. So be sure to go to TFLcar.com to find out as soon as the embargo lifts. As always, this is Roman reporting for the Fastlane Car. Check out TFLcar.com for more news, views, and of course, real world Nissan Altima all-wheel drive turbo reviews. See you guys next time. Ciao. Ice cream.